Hello guys and welcome to this week's video tutorial. If you want to become a proficient modeler in automotive industry and beyond, just watch on. Today we are going to finish off where we left off last week. Once our model is complete, we will find out that some geometry is wrong and patches cause us some serious troubles. In the second part of the video, we are going to deal with the problem. Okay, so let's just begin with building topology of the support component. Oh, by the way, if you want to see how we got to this stage of the model, just watch my two tutorials from previous weeks. Let's jump right in. I want to project this straight curve on side surface in here, to obtain a clean edge to align my blend surface to. I try to eyeball the right position of the curve. I look at the purple area of the scan. At the same time, I do trim convert to minimize my patch. I copy an edge curve and align my patch to it. I'm going to use this curve to sculpt control the patch. Scan data is a mess in here, but I do my best to replicate zebra stripes. I prepare this blend surface for alignment with the construction history on. I do the trim convert to make sure the edges run nicely. I will manually adjust the adjacent surface and see how this affects my blend. Here I can see that scan is doing something slightly different. I slide CVs away to cover up more volume. Remember that your imagination is the limit and you can do anything to achieve the best possible results. The number of ideas in your sack will increase with experience. Quick comparison to the zebra tells us that we can slightly tweak this surface and maybe even adding one extra row of CVs will help us get better outcome. Let's also align and adjust the bottom blend surface. I'm making sure there is no gaps in topology. We can make it shorter and polish some of the CVs. It is a good idea to make any cosmetic changes now. There is a big gap in topology in here, and we need to address this problem. Extend the top surface. Extend any short curves on surfaces and trim the patch to leave only the bit we need. I bet you can also see that the alignment command will actually change a lot in our model's topology. In fact, this area we are working on at the moment is going to be the most painful bit of modeling in the entire mirror model. I consult our scan just to quickly remind myself how geometry behaves. It looks like the blend runs here. Let's make a new intersection between these two surfaces, because we need it to be more accurate. I create a curve and align it G1 to the edge. Then I project the curve onto surrounding surfaces. At this moment I've noticed that this bottom blend is simply too short and doesn't cover our scan. Let's extend it to more suitable place.
Now I'm in the process of cleaning up the edges. I simply use a blend curve tool and place it onto the edge geometry. Later I can project it and trim our surface away, just like so. Let's do some quick blend surface aligning to the newly obtained edge and clean some excess of curves on surfaces. Our trimmed edge looks only just ok, but you can still see the wobbliness if you look at it at the lower angle. We have the last piece of surfacing to do. We are going to create a cover-up, first batch patches in here. And later we are going to analyze them against our scan data. We can use this trimmed edge to create a monorail surface. For now, our surface is a mess, but don't worry, just remove all unnecessary CVs. After that, we will be left with an empty square. From here, we can start adding more CVs again. By doing it this way, we are making sure that all CVs are more uniformly distributed. Now we have just a lining left to do and we are good to go. Let's do some whole planarizing in the bottom view and finally we can start aligning. There is a lot of manual work awaiting, let's get going. I'm comparing our work to the scan and I can see that we don't have enough volume. Let's just uh, finish off the patches away, at least we will have something to analyze. We can insert two extra spans at the intersections here and here. Uh, just on a side, um, remember to always copy geometry in progress to the clipboard. Because if you don't like results, you can always start again. Here, for example, I'm trying to make CV holes more perpendicular to the blend surface. When we are at least partially happy with our results, we can start detaching our surface at the spans. There is a tangent flick in here, which we have to fix. Let's align position G0 so we don't have any gaps. Now we can just use the G1 tangency tool to measure our tangent break. Make sure that the break is consistent throughout. At the same time, make sure that we maintain a nice intersection crease in here.
Ok, now we have to think how to reduce the surface to scan deviation and at the same time maintain surface quality and integrity. After all, we can't just blindly start pulling the geometry without considering its topology constraints. In the nutshell, we need to pull edges of the grey part up to the edges of the white part boundary. To do that, we actually have to start again by creating a new patch. Then, we do some projecting, trimming and shortening. Let's manually snap corners to this edge end. When ready, let's just align our patch on the left hand side. At this stage, don't worry about position G0 failures. Always strive to make patches as good as possible. Take your time with this because every second spent at this stage of modeling will save you at least a minute later on. Every minute that you can spend now is an hour saved later. You have probably noticed how I tumble the view all the time. I do that because it's crucial to see everything clearly. The best way to investigate everything is to rotate the view quite a lot. Let's do some aligning on the right hand side yet again. Let's use the same methodology as before and add two spans to this patch. At the same time, before going further, copy your surface and keep it in the clipboard. On a side, I have pulled this geometry away, therefore we have a tangent break between here and here. We only have a position continuity between the components and a visible highlight inconsistency. Highlights look good on both sides, but are slightly different. Ok, we can still tumble view around to see what else we can improve. We can pull this end tip just a bit. Here I have removed this uh, silver templated surface and extended our bottom blend. I did that for two reasons. First was that the surface didn't really contribute to anything good, but rather was just left over from our previous workflow. Second was that it made our bottom blend surface wiggly and of average quality. Removing it in this situation was a good idea. Unlike removing the anchor surface during construction of the rear bumper. For more info on that, you can watch this. It is going to be very hard to obtain G2 everywhere around perimeter and between patches. Let's forget the continuity and focus on highlights quality. Let's set a goal to have at least G1 tangency with a decent zebra stripes. This will be enough for our needs, especially considering the location of the area in progress and material it is going to be made of which is matte plastic. 
If you ask me how do I know what to do, what steps to take, I will say that I don't really know what will bring best results. I simply try different techniques to achieve what I need. I use a line tool, although it might not be a good idea at this stage. I slide CVs and pull and push them. Everything is allowed that brings you that one step forward to completion. Okay, so here is a little step that we can reduce. We can also introduce a bit more of zebra curling in here. Work on both G1 CVs as well as G2 CVs. Move back and forth if needed. Let's look at it from another acute angle. There is still something we can touch on. Okay, I think we can call it a day. But how about our volume? What can we do about it? How about pushing geometry out? Did you notice how I use the axis CV alignment to easily achieve G1? 